Good day, class. Today, our topic is the human circulatory system. And to be more specific, we're going to talk about the key components. Here are the learning objectives for today's discussion. First, we are all we are, we are required to discuss the functions of the human circulatory system. Second, identify the components and functions of the circulatory system. And third, identify the three types of blood circulation in the body. But before we move on to the deeper discussion, let's have this think about it question. Now, this think about it question will motiva- motivate you and will challenge you to really focus on the discussion. So the question is, why blood testing is one of the best ways to judge a person's health? So what I want you to do for the meantime is to remember this question. Don't be in a hurry answering this. So you need to answer this at the end of the video recorded discussion to earn additional points for your recitation. Circulatory system in all organisms can be classified as open circulatory system or closed circulatory system. Now, in open circulatory system, blood is pumped by one or more heart-like structures to the system of cavities. So this type of circulatory system is mostly evident in mollusks and arthropods. While for closed circulatory system, blood is pumped by a heart through blood vessels that extend throughout the body. So this type of circulatory system is evident on all vertebrates and few of invertebrates. Now, for human for humans, the type of our circulatory system is closed circulatory system. Now, the question is what are the functions of this system, this organ system, which is your human circulatory system? Now, let's go ahead and try to enumerate. One is transport nutrients, hormones, and remove waste products. So, in general means, your circulatory system, the human circulatory system, is known to be a transporting system. And here, you've noticed it transports nutrients, hormones, and also it removes waste products. So, as you can notice from this function, you would see interrelationship from other organ systems. So, for transport of nutrients, circulatory work hand-in-hand with your digestive system. For hormones, uh, your circulatory system works hand-in-hand to your endocrine system. And to remove waste products, your circulatory system works hand-in-hand to your uh, excretory system. That's the reason why your circulatory system is known to be a transporting system. Another thing, another function is for gaseous exchange. So here, interrelationship is more on the respiratory system. So we have separate discussion for this particular concept, which is gaseous exchange. Uh, If we're going to talk about the relationship of the two systems circulatory and respiratory systems. Now, third, your circulatory system is for immunity. So when we say immunity, this is the ability of an organism to resist infections. So one of the components of the circulatory system uh, help us to fight against infection, parasites, pathogens, and other foreign materials. So in this case, your circulatory system works hand in hand to your lymphatic system. So these functions you will see, or I mean, you would uh, really learn more about these functions. You will get uh, a deeper idea about these things once we start discussing key components of the human circulatory system. 
So, what are the key components of the human circulatory system? And to answer that, here's an illustration. Circulatory system, key components are the heart, blood vessels, and the blood. Now, you might wonder, are these components organ or not? And to answer that question, let's try to talk about each component one by one. Let's start with blood. Now, blood is a fluid. And to be more specific, this is a fluid tissue, a connective tissue. Not an organ, but again, a fluid tissue. Blood is also thick and considered to be a homogeneous liquid. But when you get a, uh, a droplet of blood and you want to see its component using microscope, it reveals that there are solid and liquid components. And that particular concept will be strengthened and intensified later. So we're going to identify what are these components. And also, your blood is sticky, opaque in color inside the body. So, metallic in taste. So, when you taste your blood, some traces of blood, if you have wounds, it gives you a metallic taste. So, the reason behind it will be further intensified later. Why blood is metallic in taste. And as mentioned, blood, the color of blood inside the body is opaque. Now, that becomes only red when it is exposed to external environment. And because we have uh, air in the environment, and remember that air has oxygen component, so making it red is simply because of its reaction to oxygen. Also, you have to remember that blood is five times thicker than water, making it viscous and also your blood has pH level between 7.2 to 7.6 and blood temperature is slightly higher than the normal body temperature so slightly 38 degrees Celsius so what are the functions of this uh, fluid tissue so your blood functions for regulating body temperature fight infections and produce clots that minimize the loss of body fluids from wounds. So these functions will be further intensified or deepen once we discuss the components of the blood as mentioned earlier. So making blood as the river of life due to its function. To better understand the functions mentioned earlier for blood, why is it a river of life? Why blood is considered to be a river of life? Let's go ahead and try to understand the components of blood. Let's have first plasma. Now, plasma is about 92% water. So, plasma is the only non-living fluid matrix in the blood. It serves as a transporting agent wherein it transports blood solids, the other component of blood, nutrients, hormones, and other materials like carbon dioxide as a waste material. Here, your plasma, the percentage of that to blood is 55%. If you have blood samples and you want to span that in a centrifuge, you would see this component of your blood in, in, in a yellow color, the one I'm uh, projecting here in your end. So, that component of your blood, this one, is the plasma. Okay? So, again, why blood is considered to be a river of life? Plasma is one of the answers because plasma transports important materials. Likewise, it removes waste materials in the body. Now, the question is, what are the 45% components of blood? Now, let's talk about the other elements of blood, 
we call them as formed elements or cell elements. Let's have the red blood cells. Now here, function of your red blood cells is to carry oxygen to cells and carbon dioxide away from them. In this case, for red blood cells, other term used for this is erythrocytes. We spell that as E-R-Y-T-H-R-O-C-Y-T-S. So that is erythrocytes, the other term for RBC. Here, as mentioned, it carries oxygen to cells and also it removes carbon dioxide away from the cells. Here, oxygen is attached to hemoglobin. Red blood cells has hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is an iron-containing protein. And from there, as mentioned, there is an iron. Okay, And the reason why your blood tastes like a metallic one simply because of the reaction and the attachment of oxygen to the iron. Kaya nga tayo may gamot ng ferrous sulfate and whatnot. No? Lasang metal. Right? And why is it still red in color once exposed to external environment? Still, due to the element iron present in the hemoglobin. So, it easily reacts to uh, oxygen, your iron. Kaya nga still, metallic in taste and red in color. Okay? So, RBCs, your erythrocytes, are known to be a nucleate, which means to say it lacks nucleus and other organelles. Also, what I want you to, you to remember for red blood cells uh, is that the shape of it, so the, the, this type of cell is has flattened disc with depressed centers. Parang we can tag it as miniature donuts, somewhat like your donuts in terms of shape. Now, in this case, uh, your red blood cells, as part of the 45% components of blood, mas marami siya compared to the other uh, cell elements that I'm going to discuss later. Okay? So, that's your red blood cells or erythrocytes. Going back to the same question, why blood is considered to be a river of life? The answer is still part of the explanation for red blood cells. So, river of life simply because your red blood cells carry oxygen. And oxygen is one of the important material used by cells to do its cellular activities. Now, let's proceed to another cell element. That is your white blood cells. Here, this is your white blood cell. I, I'm one pointing here in your end. The one I'm projecting here. The one I'm pointing using my cursor. So, this, uh, these are rather white blood cells or WBCs. Other term used for WBCs is leukocytes. We can spell at uh, we can spell that word as uh, using letters like L E U K O C Y T S leukocytes. So here it helps. You now your WBC is uh, help fighting disease and infection by attacking germs that enter the body or uh, by attacking foreign materials that enters the body, other pathogens, right? So this is purely for immunity. So one function mentioned earlier is for immunity in terms of your blood. So this is still no, the reason why blood is considered to be a river of life. So it helps us to really fight against foreign materials. In this case, your WBCs are considered to be nucleated, which means to say it has a nucleus and complete organelles. So that's your WBCs. Now for the last cell element for your blood, still part of the 45% is your platelets. So here, your platelets are not cells in the strict sense. 
Okay, and according to some reference materials for biology, again, platelets are not cells in the strict sense. So these are just considered to be debris in your blood. So what is the function of these platelets? Uh, platelets help blood form a clot at the site of a wound. So this is more about blood clotting. Still, this would give us an explanation why blood is considered to be a river of life. It prevents, no, it easily allow no, your wounds to heal properly because of platelets. So a clot seals a cut and prevents excessive blood loss. If you keep on expelling out blood in your body, that causes you to die. Okay? So platelets are the one to prevent that to happen. So platelets, as mentioned, are just fragments of unusual multinucleate cells. So there are two or more nucleus found in a cell. That's the reason why these are described as fragments that are unusual compared to the typical cell we have. So again, this is your platelets. And using this illustration, these are the platelets in the blood. So blood has cell elements, your RBCs, erythrocytes, your WBCs, leukocytes, your platelets, other term for that is thrombocytes. We can spell that as T H R O M B O C Y T E S. Thrombocytes. And the non uh, living fluid matrix is your plasma. The other key component of the human circulatory system is the blood vessels. So blood vessels are considered to be a vascular system, a closed transport system. So we're in blood flows here. So this is just a transporting system that allows blood to properly uh, circulate all throughout the body. A way for blood to move from one place to another in our body. So that's the work of the blood vessels. So putting the concept into an, an analogy, we can say that blood vessels are somewhat the same with system of roads, wherein there are freeways, secondary roads, and alleys. And let's try to use those analogies for the different types of blood vessels. And let's see which one is freeway which one is secondary road or alley. Now, there are three types of blood vessels and they differ in terms of shape, structure, and function. But for the meantime, let's try to look on the function of these blood vessels. For arteries, uh, blood vessels, this type of blood vessels, they carry blood away from the heart to the other parts of the body so the one that they carry uh, the one that they carry in terms of blood is a is an oxygen rich blood so for veins in terms of function this type of blood vessels they carry blood from the body back to the heart the type of uh, blood they carry is the oxygenated blood lacks oxygen in real sense now for capillaries to talking about its function so these are blood vessels that carry blood from the arteries to the body cells and then back to the veins so if we're gonna look merely to capillaries in terms of function we can see that uh, capillaries serves as a connection between arteries and veins wherein oxygenated blood will coming from arteries will move through capillaries likewise uh, uh, blood that are locks uh, lack with rather lack with oxygen it moves from capillaries going back to veins now capillaries are blood vessels that are attached to organs tissues so in in this sense capillaries are very 
um, small or they are considered to be tiny tubes. So, single cell wall, yung capillaries, in order to easily, in order for materials to easily diffuse to the tissue cells. Okay? So, that's the reason why nasabi ni Sir na parang connection siya between uh, arteries and veins. So, meeting point parang ganyan for the blood to uh, move to the other parts of the body which really need oxygen. No? A blood containing uh, oxygen and also capillaries work for uh, removing, uh, receiving blood that are now okay, less in oxygen content and it, uh, I mean some blood which uh, receives waste materials so it moves back to capillaries going to veins and to further intensify this part we have separate discussion for uh, for this whole process once we discussed interrelationship between two systems the respiratory and circulatory system. For the meantime, what I want you to remember are the functions for these types of blood vessels. Now, let's try and look on the structure using this illustration for easy uh, absorption of the concept. Now, this is uh, your artery composed of three tissues, connective, smooth muscle, uh, uh, endothelium. So endothelium uh, that is inside this blood vessel. Okay. So if we're gonna compare it to system of roads, your arteries are considered to be super highways because this type of blood vessels, your arteries are known to be large vessels. Okay. Now all of the arteries except pulmonary arteries they carry oxygen rich blood always remember that they carry oxygen rich blood that's the reason why its function is it carries blood away from heart going to other parts of the body so that is the work of your artery now uh, your veins or this is uh, the structure of your vein as mentioned uh, it composed or it has valve this one it has valve to prevent ba- backflow of blood because in, in this case the the flow of blood is against the gravity so usually blood uh, which are lack with I mean bloods which are lack with oxygen so less oxygen content they came from body parts and they have to move back going to heart so the flow is upward so that is against the the gravity so that's the reason why it has valve your your vein okay now you might also wonder why pulmonary arteries they they doesn't carry or they don't carry uh, oxygen rich blood as part of the explanation i mentioned for artery so that will be further deepened once we discuss the real, the uh, flow of blood in the heart. We have separate discussion for that. Okay. So another thing that you have to remember for arteries as additional information, they have thick wall. Okay, thick wall, so that it can withstand so much pressure. Okay. Because blood came from heart, and we know for a fact that heart pumps the blood, no, going to the other parts of the body. So it has an, a strong pressure applied for uh, pumping the blood throughout the body. So again, if we're gonna compare your veins to a system of roads, we can actually say that these are secondary roads. Okay, so that is for your veins. And most of veins are located near and between skeletal muscles. Always remember that. Now for capillaries, this uh, this uh, is the the structure of your capillaries, as mentioned earlier. Found, I mean, uh, partly found on external uh, parts of the organs or tissues. And this is tiny tube, single-celled wall. 
like uh, the one projecting here in your end. The one I'm pointing here using my cursor. Smallest blood vessel, we can uh, tag it as a way for us to really put it into analogy as side streets or alleys. Mga iske iske nita, kasi small lang siya. Okay, tiny tubes lang siya of blood vessels. So, thin wall. Here, oxygen and other nutrients as mentioned earlier, kaya siya thin wall for easy diffusion of materials from the cell going to capillary. Okay, and also another another thing that you have to remember for capillary as mentioned earlier pa rin, why thin, why single cell wall, uh, for easy diffusion also of the other waste material like the carbon dioxide. Okay, so again, artery, large vessels, your superhighways, your arteries, your veins, okay, they have valves or valve, so we can consider them as your secondary roads. Now, your capillary, uh, capillaries are attached to organs and other tissues for easy diffusion, kaya siya single cell wall, and for other materials to easily remove out of that body parts. So, in, in this case, your capillaries, blood will go here. The uh, blood with rich, uh, rich in oxygen will move to capillary. Also, your capillary serves as passageway for blood with uh, less oxygen content and it carries waste material. Now, let's talk about the last key component of the human circulatory system and that is the heart. So, heart is a four-chambered, hollow muscular organ, approximately same with the size of our fist. Okay? So, for the anatomical parts of this organ, we have separate discussion for that once we have the discussion for the blood flow in the heart. So I'm going to have a deeper focus on the parts and functions of the human heart. So functions of this organ here, generating blood pressure, regulating and pumping the blood all throughout the body. So that will be further intensified for our next discussion. But what I want you to remember here for this organ, as key component of the circulatory system, heart is the major organ for the circulatory system for it pumps the blood all throughout the body. And this is considered to be a, a chamber. Okay? A chamber. So again, uh, heart is the main organ for circulatory system. Now, let's go ahead and discuss different types of circulation. And just to give you a heads up, this will be further uh, discussed once we have uh, the discussion for flow of blood in the heart. But let me give you the general overview of it. Because this will be further uh, strengthened once we talk about the relationship of the two systems, circulatory and respiratory system. So, um, ideas are given to you as just overview but uh, once we put that into another concept talking about relationship of the two systems you can easily uh, learn things for the next discussion now we have pulmonary circulation coronary circulation is systemic circulation for pulmonary circulation the movement of blood is from the heart so blood came from the heart and it goes to the lungs why it should go why it should move going to the lungs for the blood okay to become rich in oxygen because from what you've learned in respiratory system lungs are known to be the main organ for respiration and inside the lungs you would see alveoli and that is a site for gaseous exchange now the the alveoli they will uh, serve as 
place for the capillaries to collect okay for the blood moving to capillaries to collect oxygen from the air now that's the time also that the the blood uh, moves or being carried by the capillaries will remove the the waste it carries moving to the alveoli okay so pulmonary circulation is important blood moves from heart going to the lungs and it moves back to the heart so we will further intensify that in the next discussion so the goal for this pulmonary circulation is to make deoxygenated deoxygenated blood which are known to be lack with oxygen to become oxygenated blood now for coronary circulation this is movement of blood throughout the tissues of the heart so we have separate discussion for that but for the meantime what i want you to remember is this is more of blood flow in the heart now systemic circulation this is more of movement of blood from the heart so you have already oxygenated blood rich in oxygen blood that will already move to the rest of the body except lungs okay except lungs now that's the time that the other body parts will receive oxygen okay will receive oxygen so these are the types of circulation pulmonary coronary and systemic circulation now this this is a, a simple diagram for for you to be able to visualize how blood flows in in the body in terms of pulmonary circulation or pulmonary circuit so that is movement of blood from heart going to the lungs to make it oxygenated the reason why you've noticed here uh, the color of the blood represented in this diagram is in blue color just to make clear lang that oxygen is i mean the blood is poor with oxygen rich in carbon dioxide so once it moves you no know, blood moves to the lungs that's the time that it will do gaseous exchange making it oxygenated so it will move back to the heart pulmonary circulation that's pulmonary circulation now blood that flows inside the heart we call that as coronary circulation so blood here can become oxygenated and blood uh, which become oxygenated at first deoxygenated yon now if blood from the area one chamber or part of the heart now the blood that flows uh, on that part of the heart na oxygenated na once it moves all throughout the body parts that the type of circulation we are talking to is your systemic circulation or systemic circuit so also ganun pa rin yung mga anak that the blood no blood that are lack with oxygen content so from systemic it will move back to the heart in order for it to still uh, the the blood that are known to be deoxygenated becomes or become rather oxygenated once move to the lungs okay once move to the lungs so still a continuous process of making poor oxygen content blood to become rich oxygen uh, content blood that will go all throughout the body okay so that's the different types of circulation now let's go back to think about it question so earlier at the beginning of the uh, the beginning of this video recorded discussion you are just simply reminded that this question will be answered at the end of the discussion now for you to earn additional golden points for your recitation use everything you've learned from the discussion and try to answer this question why blood testing is one of the best ways to judge a person's health now for your answer or for your explanation you have to type that or put that on the comment section below and let's see if you have a correct explanation or not now that's it 
hopefully you learned something for today's discussion. Please subscribe on my YouTube channel and keep liking the videos. Also, don't forget to uh, click the notification bell for more updates. So that's the key components of circulatory system.